can't think of anything more perfect for the Halloween season than a graveyard. But hear me out, car graveyard. This video is going to be over the Junkyard Project, which I completed in a series of live streams over on Patreon. This video is going to be a summary over all those live streams that shows the project from beginning to end. Literally, my dog is sneezing so much. Why? Side note, because this is a series of live streams, there are going to be gray boxes that show up every now and then. It's just covering up my face cam from the live stream because the words are never going to match my mouth and for some reason I find that distracting. So the gray box was my solution. This idea all came about when someone I've known for a very long time, we'll call him the client, saw my abandoned coffee shop project and thought it would be really cool if the same concept was applied to cars. He's an avid collector of model cars, specifically matchbox size cars. Now I normally don't do commissions, but this idea really sparked my interest. I'd never worked with metal model cars, and I'd also never worked in that scale. And of course you know how much I love aging things. So I said yes, and the project began. Actually his part of the project was first. He had to pick out all the cars that were going to go in the junkyard, and I had to find a case that was going to hold them all. I told him several times how much I was planning to mess up these cars and made sure that he was going to be okay with it and he kept saying he was fine with it. So I allowed myself not to feel guilty about messing up these beautiful cars that he purchased. This is also going to be the most dangerous video you've seen from my channel. It's going to include sledgehammers, blowtorches, and just general destruction. So before we even start, I'm going to say don't try this at home. Don't do this at home. I made sure I was being as safe as possible through all of this destructive process and there was always another person with me just to make sure that something did happen, someone was there to help. Don't try this at home. Okay, now we can start. I decided to purchase a football display case for this project and I bought the display case first so that I knew my boundaries, my width, my depth, and my height. I knew this was going to be more of an organic project with landforms and so I, I did draw out a little bit but I didn't quite stick to my plan but just having a general idea was helpful. To start building up the land, I'm using some paper that came in a package of something that I purchased. This is going to help me build up a lot of bulk quickly. Ultimately, I'm going to be covering it with clay, but to save cost, I don't want the entire thing to be clay. So this is basically armature for the land. I wanted the center to have a dip in it because I want there to be a car that's kind of sitting in a pond and rusting away. So to create that I am making the lowest part of the project the base of the display and then building up ramps around it so that it seems plausible that rain would have collected there and a car would have rolled down the hill. To make sure it's a smooth transition, I'm just going to cover the edges that are merging into the base of my display with some masking tape. To make the area more interesting, I wanted to have a hill on one side so that some of the cars would be lifted up and some of the cars would be a little bit lower. This is just going to make the whole thing more interesting to look at and discover new items as you look around the entire space. I covered everything with masking tape to make sure I wasn't fighting with the folds of the paper and I'm also double checking with the height to make sure I have plenty of room for those cars on top. Now that I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and start covering everything with paper clay. I'm using DOS paper clay for this, although creative paper clay works as well. And I think when it comes to land masses, homemade paper clay works really well also because it tends to have a lot of fibers and it makes a really natural earthy texture. But for now I'm just going with what I already owned. I'm adding glue on top of the masking tape because this is just going to help the paper clay initially stick to the tape and eventually once it's all hardened I don't really have to worry about it coming off of the surface. Once I let the entire thing dry I was able to go ahead and paint it. This is going to be kind of like an underpainting. Eventually I'm going to be adding ground cover and bushes and moss, 
but uh, it's great to go ahead and paint it some of the general colors that you want to see coming from the ground so that if you do have gaps in the bushes or the ground cover you aren't going to be seeing white clay through those gaps. I used a different color brown here and there and then I added in some black when it was going to be the area that was really deep and covered with water. I also added in some green specifically in the areas that I felt I was going to be adding a lot of the bushes and this kind of helped me also in my mind map out where I was going to put some of the greenery. I wanted most of it to look like muddy rocky land but I thought the greenery would really add a contrast to the mud and dirt. I looked up the scale for these cars and went to the railroad aisle and bought some pre-made trees that were in the correct scale. These still look like they're a little bit small so they're kind of like those weed trees that kind of pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> They were really easy to install, especially because I had used paper clay. All I needed to do was drill into the clay surface and a little bit down into the paper and then insert the tree and add a little bit of glue. It was easy to add this one because I knew there wasn't going to be a car in the way because this is kind of going to be in the middle of the pond, but the rest of the trees I needed to space out my cars and make sure I wasn't putting a tree right where a car needed to go. This isn't going to be the final place where the cars are, but it, I just kept rearranging them. It was really kind of fun to try and figure out the puzzle of where the car should be, what made the most sense. And it was at this point I realized I probably needed a ramp to go up to the surface. So later on you will see that I do cut into that hill to make a ramp up the back. Once I was happy with the general placement of the cars or where most cars would most likely be, I felt more confident that I could place trees and not, not have them be in the way down the road when I'm actually gluing the cars down. I also felt confident enough that I could add a little bit of ground cover such as gravel and sand. And I also went back later with some watered down paint to go over these to blend them into the previously painted dirt. After getting a good start on the landscaping, it was time to start messing up my first car. I sent one final text to the client asking if he was sure, and he said yes. So here we go. I also want to put a trigger warning here. If you have any past trauma having to do with car accidents or especially car accidents having to do with fire or fire trauma, I highly suggest you fast forward to this timestamp so you can avoid that imagery. You will still see the destroyed cars in the final shots, but you won't have to watch the process. This beautiful orange car was my first victim, and since the beginning of this project I had an idea to try and run it over with my own car to see how flat I could get it. I put a piece of metal under my tire so in case there were any sharp metal points it didn't puncture my tire. And these things are a lot tougher than they look. It did crunch in the roof of the car, but the rest of the car was untouched. So I ran over it again, and still I was having a hard time crunching this little guy any flatter. So then of course I had to move on to tougher methods, which included a sledgehammer. And finally, this poor car gave in and was smashed. Enough to my liking, at least. The tires popped off, the windshield was obliterated, and the sides of the car popped out a little bit, which I think is very realistic to what would happen when cars are actually smashed like that. Initially, I just started with one idea for destruction, running a car over with my car, and then I allowed my patrons to add more ideas to the list. I could already tell from adding in this first car and its tires that popped off that I was heading in the right direction. It just looked like it was supposed to be in this setting. So in a live stream, I grabbed some safety goggles, a mask, and a bunch of tools and a Dremel, and we were just going to do whatever we could to mess up some cars. Thankfully, I did have a list from the client of important parts of each car, so I knew different features 
for each that I was not supposed to really mess with or destroy. But everything else was free game. So I just used different types of sanding pads, like different abrasiveness to really dig into the side of the cars, just seeing what kind of effects I could get. I also decided to use this small hammer to mess around with the windshields and this is a jeweler's hammer which was really helpful to break through some of the windshields which is definitely a feature you see in cars. I think this one I also put a nail through maybe to get that first hole. In order to remove some of the hoods I used some just wire grippers and then I decided to bend the hood and the hammer really wasn't helping with this. Like I said, these cars are really tough, but I was able to grab another tool and bend it by hand. And I just think it adds so much, these little tiny details, it kind of adds to the story of each car. I also cut through one of the front posts and started bending back the roof of the car as well. So this car was really getting a rough treatment. I also wanted to mess around with the tires a bit because I couldn't have pristine tires in the junkyard. This one got pretty messed up. One last trigger warning for fire content before this clip. It was so spooky, I made my husband do it. I do not like fire. I just supervised and made sure the area was completely clear so that nothing else besides the car could catch on fire. Don't try this at home. This of course ended up being my most extreme aging or destroying technique, but it really did bubble up the paint like you would see on a car that had been in extreme heat like this one. The hood would not prop up on its own, so I found a small stick to help it prop up for while the blowtorch was going, and then obviously the stick burned, and this was the result for this poor little car. I'm so, so sorry. This was just one of the techniques that was on my experiment list from my patrons. Another one was to put a car in Coca-Cola, which of course has a high acidity, Exit acidity? It's very acidic, and so we wanted to see if it would kind of eat away at the paint. So a couple days before the next live stream was going to happen, I added the car into this little bowl with the Coca-Cola so we could see the reveal together. I think someone also suggested putting a car in the garbage disposal, but I didn't actually try that one out, although I'm sure it would have worked. In the live stream, I revealed the results of my experiment. Of course, the blowtorch worked really well. Unfortunately, the Coca-Cola did nothing. <laughs> so uh, that was kind of disappointing, but I did make sure to wash it thoroughly so there was no sugar left in the car. And now it's time to do some more subtle, peaceful, less destructive aging in the form of painting on these cars. I actually found the process of painting to be really calming. I felt like each little car was its own miniature piece of artwork within a bigger piece. My goal here was to try and figure out a way to make it look as though the paint was naturally wearing away because of the elements being outside, being in the sun, and just natural wear and tear. So I'm using a Q-tip to dab on very thin layers of gray paint, and I'm going to build this up in some areas, and I'm going to leave the original finish shining through in some areas. This is a lot of times how you see cars. You can see what they used to be, and then you see all the damage that's accumulated over the years. This is probably my most intact car. This one is probably my most uh, not intact car because the insides actually come out because I had to rip the base off of it. But here I'm adding some brown kind of in the same way with a Q-tip. I'm making sure to go around the edges where rust would have accumulated. 
I tried the technique of adding sand to the paint to make the rust a little bit more rough. And I did that on a few cars, but I felt like the grain was just a little bit too big for this scale. And I found I liked the plain, just brown paint a little bit better for the size of the cars. I really like the method of the brown paint on the Q-tip for getting up inside of the wheel area. It just kind of made a really natural look. I also used a detail brush to go around the edges. This is where the brush effect really did work because I wanted just very tiny details, very tiny, tiny rust marks that were going in areas where I feel like there would be some paint starting to rot away. So I tried to do something different on each car, even this car here where I made one entire door and the hood were completely rusted. I feel like you see that sometimes. I'm not quite sure why maybe they didn't end up finishing what they were doing on the car and then this car that was completely rusted this is going to be the car that ends up in the pond I used brown white and orange on this car to get this nice rust effect I knew I needed a few more items besides just the car to fill out the grounds in this junkyard after I had made my final placement decisions for each one of the cars, I felt a little bit more confident on moving towards some other ideas. I found this Hot Wheels or uh, Matchbox cars, I used them kind of interchangeably, <laughs> uh, wheel repair kit, and I thought that was perfect to make some tire piles all over the junkyard. I also found this ground cover that I found in the model railroad section and I knew this was going to look like some really dead brush that had kind of been swept across the junkyard. This ended up being one of my favorite ground cover pieces. It looked really cool sandwiched in between cars and I really liked the effect of it coming out of the hood of some cars and then also how it looked just coming out of the window. So really it could be used in multiple ways. It just looks like a plant that started growing through the car and then eventually died and were left <laughs> with its dead leaf remains. See, I told you this was Halloween appropriate. <laughs> I also added some of the greenery inside of the cars, especially this one. I just thought, you know, anywhere I can add and meld the greenery with the cars themselves, that's really going to bring everything together. I've used this faux fur before many times to make long wispy grass, and so I wanted to see if it would work in this setting as well. Especially growing up in between the cars, it makes it look like the cars really have been sitting there for a long time. I would of course have to dye it so it wasn't completely white, and then also figure out a way to hide the fabric. Once I had all my plans in mind, it was time to glue down the cars, make the resin pond, and I also needed to make a custom sign to make this junkyard specific to my client. This was my result after gluing down the cars and gluing down quite a bit of ground cover. It was kind of a back and forth thing where I had to make sure that the car was in place and then making sure that the greenery was in place and it all worked together. I also decided to cut the fabric off of the faux fur to stain it with a little bit of watered down brown paint and I ended up with these kind of like monster eyelashes <laughs> and these are what I used, I, what I did was I added glue to the edge of it and laid it down on a piece of foil to dry and then I could just remove them and glue them in place in between the cars. What you see here is 10 out of the 12 cars that I was given so I had to find a place for two more. I told you earlier I needed to create a ramp for this hill, so I cut out a space and I'm going to have a car that started going up the ramp but never made it quite all the way up the hill. I will have to go back and paint that ramp area, and you'll see car number 12 in just a second. But first I'm going to go ahead and glue this clear piece of plastic in place because I'm going to start the UV resin pond very soon. So I want to go ahead and let this dry. While this is drying, I am going to be working on the junkyard sign. I had a phone call with a client and I told him I was having a hard time fitting this last car in and he suggested a typical salvage yard sign where the car is actually on top. And so that was really fun to try and figure out how to create. 
I laser cut the custom name for this junkyard into a piece of mat board and then started to build the frame around the sign. I added a thick piece of wood at the top which is going to support the car and then several more pieces of wood at the back which is going to hold up the sign. I don't show you this but later on I do add a third piece of wood that kind of goes back at an angle, kind of like it was a last ditch effort to keep the sign from falling over. Once everything was dry, I used some brown paint to go over the entire thing. This is going to start to give us a wood look. I made sure to rough up the sign because I can't have roughed up cars without a roughed up sign. And then I went back over it and dry brushed some gray because this is going to make it look like very old wood. Typically old wood starts to lose its color and it starts to get bleached by the sun. I think the sign ends up being my favorite part of this entire project. I also wanted to add some drip marks from the very top because if there's a car sitting on top of this sign, you're definitely going to see some water damage. And after all that painting, you really couldn't see the words anymore, so I went back with some watered down paint and filled in the letters. Then it was time to add the pre-aged car on top of the sign and it was so fun to see them come together because it really felt like the car was supposed to be on top of this sign and it's been there for years. I can't remember what glue I used, hope probably E6000 because I didn't want it to fall off at all. I want to say a big thank you to Catherine who sent me some shirt button snaps. These made amazing hubcaps and she sent them to me in the mail and I used them just about everywhere on the project. They looked so realistic. Once the glue was dry on the sign, it was time to insert it into the project because I have to do that before I start the pond. I drilled in one side, so one leg was drilled into the ground, and then the other side was just going to be standing in the pond, which is going to be secured in place by resin. I do want to note that since filming this, I've started using gloves with UV resin, so I do highly suggest using gloves and a mask anytime you're doing anything with any type of resin. To create a reliable seal against the plastic part, I went ahead and added resin all along that line and cured it. So now I'm ready to start the pond pouring process, but I was so thankful that they reminded me in the live stream to do a lid check first, just to make sure there was plenty of room for that junkyard sign and it wasn't being squished by the lid. So we were good to go and it was time to start pouring. I first added resin all around the sign leg. This was going to secure it in place and make sure that my sign was not going anywhere. After that, it was on to the pond itself. This is going to be a slow process because I'm going to be building it up layer by layer, making sure each one of my UV layers is cured before I move on. The first part is getting the car wherever I want it to be, and then putting a thin layer of resin all around the bottom where it's touching the base of the project, letting that kind of spread out. I wanna make sure it's as flat as possible and I don't have any lumps. I'm using a toothpick to make sure it gets in all the little crevices it needs to be in. And then I'm using a UV light and trying to get it to reach as far underneath the car as I can to make sure everything is cured. Next, I'm going to add another layer and I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again, adding resin, letting it thin out and spread around, and then curing it with the UV light. After about two layers, I added in a tire because I wanted a tire to be floating in the pond. And all along, I added some greenery as well, so it looked like some pond sludge. When using UV resin with a flashlight, it's very important to continue to cure it once you're done freezing everything in place. You can do this by putting it out in the sun for a little bit. I actually have a larger UV lamp, so I made sure to put the pond underneath that so it could cure completely. This ended up being really interesting looking. It looked like all the cars were kind of like being drawn into an alien ship. So I took photos for you. The claw. The claw is our master. The claw chooses who will go and who will stay. This is ludicrous. After that, it was time to add little bits here and there all over the ground until I felt like it was finished. 
After everything was complete, I decided to sign the side of the hill, kind of as if someone tagged the side of the hill with some spray paint. I usually like to add a shoe, but in this scale, I'm not sure anyone would have ever been able to find it. So this is the final project. It is completely done. I am so happy with it. I'm not sure this is quite what I envisioned at the beginning, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I envisioned, but I had so much fun putting this together and I really enjoyed the input and the support and the creativity that came from my Patreon community. I don't really talk about it a lot because I know some people cannot do Patreon or don't want to do Patreon, which is totally fine. And that's why I'm so happy to share the summary video here. But if you are interested in it at all, you can find the link in the description box below. We have a lot of fun over there. Okay, so now I'll be quiet and I'll let you finish up watching these final clips of the final Junkyard project. Now that the commission was complete, it was time to take it to its new owner, the client. Corey, the client. He actually lives in Oklahoma and I was wanting to do the reveal at his place amidst his giant collection of Matchbox cars. I just thought that was the most fitting place for him to see the project for the first time. And I thought maybe you would want to come with me. So if you're ready, it's time to go to Oklahoma. I know, I know, two travel vlogs in a row. I normally don't travel this much. Actually, this trip was taken back in midsummer. It was very hot. Okay, so this is Corey. I've known him my entire life. Mm -hmm. My entire life. Yeah. Not no, you have known me My your entire, entire life. life. Yep. Whatever, there was a year. I you, didn't you, I remember you told me that first year you wished there was someone as cool as you. That's right. And then here I am. And then so they delivered. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we are currently in your garage. Yep. So tell me a little bit about what you collect. Um, Hot Wheels. I uh, and I've only been collecting them for four years. Okay. So, it's kind of gotten ridiculous. Well, how many do you think you have in total? Um, I would say probably close to 5,000. 5,000. And that's not even including these display Not cases. the larger yeah, models? Yeah, there's so one, just... two, one, two, three, four, five of these display cases. So, I'd say 5,000 not including those. Wow. Okay, so what, what you're seeing behind us is just one wall. There's also like a wall that's five times this size over here, and then another wall, and then another wall, and then another wall. Okay, so do you remember what cars you gave me for this project? Do you remember? Yes. Do you remember how many there are? 13 or 12? I don't know. I don't remember either. <laughs> I, I remember that was extremely hard, picking the cars because I had limited space. Right. Because they're so, I mean, I love all kinds of cars. I mean, from the 20s all up until, until now. So yeah. honing in on a couple specific ones was really hard and a couple that I knew that would look good in yeah. this setting yeah. was, was even harder. So I kind of had to. And I warned you, I might not have been able to get them all in. Yeah. I yeah. think I did. I'm I pretty think sure I, did. I, I, I didn't have any yeah. left over. So unless I lost one. Okay. We're good. Well, I'll, I'll know because I remember. Exactly. You remember all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Okay, so I just need you to confirm for the camera and for my channel that you did ask me to mess these cars up. Yes. That was your yeah. request. Yeah, I said you can do... Well, because I, I told you what what I like about this setting in, right. in real life and how neat it is, you know, walking around and looking. So I wanted it to look as realistic. And I remember telling you, you do whatever you want to them, except for there were a couple that I wanted to leave more intact than some other ones. Right. Um, right. You told me a specific parts of the car that you right. liked. Yeah. Or about that specific car. Yeah. Okay, I tried my hardest. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was totally, I mean, I was completely fine with whatever you did because I knew, you know, I, I knew after well, seeing. Well, you say that now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how good a job you do until I saw some of it myself. Abandoned coffee shops. Yeah, that's what yeah. sold me out because you said that was like a specialty, and I was like, you know. I bet something like this would be awesome, and you know, obviously it fits in with right. with. And this was a whole new scale for me because I work in 12th scale, so like this was very tiny. Yeah. For me. So, well, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions after we're done. But are you ready to see it? I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Do I do I lift it up and? We'll do three, two, one, and we'll move on one. Okay. Three, two, one. Holy cow! That is awesome! You can pull it closer. If you want to. I've already seen that. <laughs> wow! And we can take the lid off too, that was to protect it from the sheet. That is cool. That, the, the sign and that car on the sign, that's, I mean. And that was your idea. Yeah, well, I remember you telling me that you said, I think I've got all of them where they can go, and you said you didn't have room for that one. A lot of salvage yards will have a car on a building mm -hmm. or a car on a sign, and you said, oh, I didn't think about doing that. That's a cool idea. And, oh, man. As you can see, I don't have any room left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that looks awesome. Do you want to take the lid off? Sure. Okay. Just lift it straight up. And as you can see, I already scratched it, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> that is cool. It's got, it's got the tree growing out the back window with this mercury. Wow. That... You can't even tell what color that Camaro was, mm -hmm. and I, I think, I think it, was, it was, orange? was was it orange? I don't know. Oh. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. That is awesome. Do you know what these are? Are they hubcaps? Yeah, but they're shirt buttons. Really? Oh, yeah. oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And all, so, did did you have the or? Because I remember seeing you an extra set. I I bought a set of like it was like a Hot Wheels fixer upper kit. Oh, okay. And I just saw it in um, the craft store and grabbed them because I knew I was going to want to make some tire piles. Yeah, you can... Well, and, and I'm, I'm cause I sent, so I sent you a lot of pictures of kind of ideas, and a bunch of them had a car pile on top of a car, mm -hmm. and that's like, I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. So this is the one I smashed with my car. Yeah. And then also with a hammer because yeah. they're tough. And I couldn't get my car to actually smash it. <laughs> and then this one was blowtorched. Well, I noticed the inside's all melted. Yeah. Like, you know, like it would be like from the sun. Yeah. Wow. And so that Camaro looks like it rolled down in the... Right. You know, rolled down in the pond. I wanted it to look like it was not an intentional pond, but one where it collected water. Wow. I just can't get over how realistic these look. I mean, they... they I mean, they legitimately look like they've been sitting in a salvage yard. I do remember asking to keep specific parts of certain cars, like the Superbird, because the wing and the nose are what makes that car distinct. And like the 70 GTO, the you know the nose and the spoiler, and you know there's certain things like that. But and this one, actually, I could not get off the base. The base that it came with, the, oh, really? it, the screw came, like whatever they call it when you can't get the screw out. Like it's stripped out? It's stripped out. And so I eventually just had to take, like, basically rip it apart, and the inside of that car ripped out. And I was like, alrighty. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> I guess this one's just going to be a shell. Oh, that's that's cool. Wow, I can't. I'm, I'm speechless. That is, like, every bit as good as I thought it was going to be or, or, or better. I mean, that's, that's so cool. Well, I'm glad you like it. I'm excited. It was a fun project. <laughs> you can count them. <laughs>
So you have a channel, right? I do. Okay, so tell me about your channel. Is it's, it on your shirt? It's called Corey's Car Review. Okay. Um, I started, I've always been into cars and love cars. And, Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> and thought it would be fun to do that on, you know, where I could share cars that, that I like and I enjoy with, with everybody else. Um, so I started it and and just been having a lot of fun with it. Awesome. So you're going to tell us a little bit more about your collection on your channel? Yeah, yeah. I will. I can go through and I'll go car, car to car. So it's good. It's going to be 5,000 oh. cars. It's going to be. <laughs> I, yeah, I can go through because I've never done that. Maybe do some highlights of yeah, your some, collection. A couple, and... couple cars that are some of my favorite ones. So if you are into miniatures and cars, definitely check out that video. If you're into cars, you definitely need to check out the whole channel. Tons of cars on there. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You can say bye too. Oh, bye. <laughs> This video is going to be a summary where I. This video is going to be a summary over all of. Stop sneezing! Side note, because this is. Literally, my dog is sneezing so much. Why?